Hey folks, so I'm going to try and get right into it today. Um, I've got a Game Boy Color IPS backlight kit, uh, similar in style to the Funny Playing backlight kits, but this is made by the uh, quote-unquote one-chip company. Uh, I call them that because um, compared to the Funny Playing IPS ribbon cables, they use a pretty similar design but with one chip instead, and that was basically the only consistent branding all their kits use this same nondescript unlabeled chip um, so there you have it um, thought I've explained that before but I, I don't think it actually ever made it into a video but anyway this kit was provided to me by retro game repair shop uh, and this is what you get with your package here um, I guess he sends out some stickers you get a card with a coupon code for your first order um, etc, etc. But this is the interesting stuff here. So this is what the actual kit contains. You've got the adapter PCB itself with the ribbon cable, the LCD, some wires for button control, some uh, double-sided tape for sticking the LCD down, and then some uh, clear insulation um, material. This big one goes on the back of the screen, this little one goes on the uh, back of the PCB itself, and then you just you put it all together, and bingo, bingo, boom. There you go. Um, but let's go ahead and get that installed. Uh, so I have done one of these kits before, um, especially with this exact PCB, I guess, kinda. Um, Hardware-wise, this should be identical to the previous iterations of this kit, uh, but the software allegedly has been updated to finally have button controls, so that's what we will be testing out. Um, at some point in the video, I am going to try shoving this into a Game Boy Advance, though, for shits and giggles to see what happens. Um, but I'll, I, that'll, that'll cut out and I'll just give you the summary. But anyway, let's go ahead and get started. Set this stuff off to the side here. Got today's donor. I've had this Game Boy just kind of rattling around on my desk. Um, and I haven't done anything at all with it because it's missing some parts. Um, but I, I, I feel like, I feel like this is what I, what I should be doing. I mean, it's, it's painfully stock, other than this super fantastic edition here, which I suppose I can do some talking about as I'm taking it apart. I'll just get my screwdriver here. Sorry, I bumped the camera a little bit. Like usual, just six try points. All along the periphery. And that'll come right off. And I'm just giving this thing a quick once over, and make sure that there's no glaring issues like leaking capacitors or corrosion or something. Um, I have already checked this, and I do already know that it works. But just double checking it because I have a lot of Game Boys. <laughs> I get them confused sometimes. All right. Let's slide this bale up so we can get the screen out. And 
and yeah, even the speaker looks good. A little dirty, but looks fine. Cool. So I'm just going to go ahead and pull these buttons out for the time being. They are, of course, going back in because these things are super sweet. These are um, some custom buttons designed by, designed and manufactured by one of my buddies here. Um, Retro CNC. Anyway, pop the screen out. There it goes. Just gotta twist the shell, and usually the adhesive will pop and will re release the screen. Boom. I'm going to throw this back in here so we can test it out and get a baseline for power usage. And what game Oh no, I don't have it handy because of course not. That would make my life easy. Okay. Well, oh wait, it's in my uh just kidding, it's right here. Ta-da. Same card I usually use. Okay. Uh, power supply here. And where's my power cable? There it is. Set it to 2.4 volts, and here goes nothing. Move that over so you can see it. In the overworld, where I usually test, it is pulling, don't know how well you can see that, but it's pulling basically 0 .092, 0 79, between 79 and 82 milliamps. The display shows amps, but you just move the decimal place over three places and get milliamps. And of course this is at um, 2.4 volts, like usual. So, I think that's a good baseline. Kill that. I don't expect the power usage to be very much different, if at all, than the uh, old kit, but... It's always nice for con to get confirmation. One thing I will reiterate is that these kits are coming with Topoly screens instead of the LG screens that the Funny Plane kits come with. I did do a video on that a while back. Um, TLDR of that is the screens are much lower quality, but they do still work. The biggest issue with them is that there's a much higher rate of DOA LCDs, which is, I suppose, more of an issue for the retailer than anything else, but it's still frustrating to deal with. I'm going to try insulating that, and here goes nothing. I can't really tell you what the default brightness is because just my finger on the PCB seems to be hitting these uh, sensors. And this is the uh, color palette one. There we go. All right, what if I set it down?
All right, so at minimum brightness, this thing is pulling 204 milliamps. So just over double. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, oh, nine. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. At max brightness, this thing is pulling 297 to 299, jumps all the way as high as 348, holy shit. All right, so that's rough. I hate how much it moves around, but you can see this, this line, it's not quite steady. So the sample rate isn't, uh, it's hard to determine exactly what it's pulling because, I mean, you can see this line jumping up and down, you know, the sample rate is telling me, oh, sometimes it'll tell me at the peak, sometimes it'll tell me the valley. I actually like it if it told me the average, but we'll just have to, just have to do that part ourselves. 299 to 348, we'll call it 330-ish. And yeah. Okay, cool. So all's well. Bear with me just a second. I'm going to pause real quick um, because I do have a couple of things I want to test out, but they don't quite necessarily belong in this video. So uh, I'll be back in just a sec. Now this may come as a shock to you, but the thing that the manufacturer said wouldn't work, turns out it doesn't really work. I mean, I, I guess it kind of works. So, there's that. But, yeah, so be it. I kind of figured as much, but I, I just had to know. Anyway, let's carry on. Let's, uh, stop messing around and get on with it. All right. So the next step would normally be, by the way, I do, I almost always do this in my videos, but I rarely actually mention what I'm doing and I don't want it to, I don't want you to misunderstand. There is a purpose behind, um, behind what I'm doing. Whenever I get one of these kits, I plug it in to the Game Boy first to test it out and get some numbers, but you should always... You should always test it first before you even bother continuing with the install because if you if you go so far as to get the screen basically glued in and the kit doesn't work, well, you're kind of SOL on that one. Um, but anyway, let's continue. So we can use a stock screen lens for this kit and in fact this kit doesn't even come with a new lens. I'm going to swap out this lens just because it's kind of gross, but I'm going to save this one and clean it up because I think it will probably clean up real nice, but just pop it out. Let's uh, start at the top. That's usually easier. There we go. And that's going to need a lot of cleaning. Nice. Let's also go ahead and remove the original LCD gasket because we will be replacing it with this stuff, I guess. Well, actually, I suppose we can reuse the gasket, but I do need to remove it while I'm trimming so that it doesn't get all filled up with plastic shavings. thing stuck down. There we go. Oh, I ripped it by accident. Oh well.
All right, and so the trim is going to be the same as the previous trims. Um, last time I did one of these kits, I ended up just using a pre-trimmed shell, and that is absolutely the easiest thing you can do. I do recommend it if, if those are available. If not, then so be it, but there you go. But you can see on this shell, because I never bothered putting a lens on this one either, exactly what needs to be trimmed. And to do the trimming, I think I'm going to use my flush cutters here. Just go ahead and abuse these a little bit more. And so on the right, you can see it goes almost all the way to this edge here. Place a snip right there. On the left, almost all the way to this edge here. There's another snip. And we'll come back to that. This actually would probably go easier with um, the Knoif method. But try this first. This shell is actually a little bit brittle, which is kind of concerning, but make it work. And then on top, Jesus. Uh, this goes all the way over to about there. About there. So let's do a test fit now. I did not cut off enough. Not on top, not on bottom. That's okay. Let me grab a Sharpie. And then I can mark off 
to where I need to go to do more cutting. I always forget about this part. smooth cuts how about it of course this will come out much better if you have um, like a rotary tool especially if you have it in a rigid uh, setup like a stand I'm referred to as like a drill press stand which is basically what I would normally use for this, but... well it will sit in there just like that now I'm not going to tape this in just yet because you notice the LCD does move around a little bit so I want to make sure that I've got the line mint mint before I slam it home you know so to do that I am going to um, I'm actually going to pause a minute and clean up these cuts Again, you do not have to, but it will turn out much better. I'm just going to do this on my uh, my rotary tool here. I'll go over this and smooth it out, especially right here. This is this is not good. You can spend more time with a uh, flush cutter and get that nice and smooth, but I've got the tool. I'm going to use the tool. I'll be right back. All right, there we go. Took very little time at all to get this all smoothed out and you know, if you can see how much better that is now it's all nice and smooth I made sure to match the height on that as well um, unfortunately I went a little bit deep with the flush cutters so there's only so much I can do about these white marks but that should be covered up by the lens same thing up here but all nice and smooth again not explicitly required but it will result in a much better mod I am going to go ahead and put the lens on first. Is this the correct lens? Nope, that is not the correct lens. Hang on. This is for the older mod. Uh, 
I knew that looked funny, but I couldn't quite place it. How's this look? That's right. I still don't like the uh, color on these lenses. They could do a much better job than they do, but it is what it is, I guess. off. There we go. And we will drop that in there. Beautiful. Beauty might. Alright. Now I'm just going to set this in here for the time being. Ooh, you know what I should do? Before I do that, I'm going to get the tape ready. I'm going to lay some tape down. And this stuff is like twice as thick as I would want to use. Oh, no, I suppose it's fine on the bottom. And you could also use one of the many brackets out there. Um, they are absolutely fantastic, but one thing they are not is required. They're very helpful for getting everything lined up, but not, they're not, you, you don't need it. It's just a nice to have. Let me grab a spudger. So make sure that is nice and pressed down. A little bit wonky up here in the corner where I left a little bit of material. I'm just going to leave it for the time being, and we're just going to do a dry run here. And make sure everything fits proper. All right, where did I put my purse supply? Let's put this stuff away. That is, like, super spot on. Oh, 
I'll go. If we do this upside down, it'll be fine. And then just place it from here, make sure it's all nice and lined up. And uh, yeah, that'll be good. All right, let's do that. Let's do it. Tweezers for that, don't I? I don't know where my tweezers are. So. Nice and pressed down, and we are done with that part. Oh, don't forget to check your uh, Discord message. I'll wait. forget about this insulation I this stuff on the back of the screen I think it is 100% unnecessary or obviously I would have already installed it but I suppose it can't really hurt so screw it and then this will go over that What I am going to do is I'm going to take a little bit more of this tape here, just a little bit. Jam it right in the middle of there. this reattached and again you want to press down on the PCB and not the screen the screen is hanging over a small gap in the plastic so if you press down on this the screen will bend and it will break get that lined up stick that down and the question is where do we want to stick these sensors I'm thinking we'll keep one of them right there in the top corner I think that'll be fine. And if for some reason you have trouble with these sensors, these are literally just pieces of copper tape soldered to a wire. You can do that yourself if you have copper tape at least. other one I'm going to run under the ribbon cable and the 
question of where. I'm guessing we'll do it right there. Why not? Jam it right in there. Yep. Oh, the tape already fell off. Or the adhesive backing, rather. And yeah, you'll see the wire and you'll see both the touch sensors on the inside, but I mean, I, I think these mods are really cool. I like being able to see the work that was put in. Drop that in there. That is actually a super large concern because I don't have the tools to trim this. I will have to mention this to my buddy. Uh, that is such a bummer. I wanted to keep these buttons. Shoot. Okay. Well, now what? I don't think I have OEM buttons. Oh, these orange ones. I don't think these orange ones are going to look any good, though. Eh, I don't hate it. Hang on. I'm gonna go commit a sin here. Let me find my sharpie again. And uh, I'll be right back. Be. Don't do this at home. <laughs> All right. Now it fits in there perfectly. Very little concern of it rubbing. I suppose if you really try and get it to rub. All right. I'm gonna. Never mind. I'm gonna put just a wee bit more into this. On second thought, with the uh, motherboard in here, it shouldn't be able to move like this, so I think it'll be fine. Um, eesh, that's rough. I hate having to do that to such a beautiful piece of art, but... But ultimately, I am going to do something with this. that isn't just keep it in my collection for the end of time, till the end of time, rather. Uh, let's get a brush. Give these a little bit of a cleaning. It's just a soft bristled plastic brush. almost completely forgot we have to trim this down too. Um, so this, we need to cut this battery terminal. Uh, 
nice and flush just like that and then I need to go through and cut each of these pins flush but I'm gonna go do this over the trash can so I don't create a bunch of debris um, when you're cutting these with flush cutters wear eye protection don't be a dumbass these things fly off at like Mach 2 and they will embed themselves into your eye they're very sharp so at the very least close your eyes when you're clipping but eye protection is better um, but I'll be back I'm gonna go trim these all right takes no time at all but there it is place our last insulating strip down just like that and we're good to go to put this thing back together Yep, still feels fine. Alright, what did I do with the IR window? no recollection of removing it. I don't even know if this Game Boy had one, to be honest. I've also either completely lost it or it never even had one. What the fuck? Is that upside down? Nope, oh, it was upside down. Okay. Nice. Power switch. So yeah, I'm using an orange one because I'm gonna piss with the cock you got. Ugh! Dang it. Oh my god, I'm just realizing I didn't even do the one thing that this kit does better than the other. I forgot to wire in the button controls. Ugh. Okay, well, I'll do some tests first and then I'll come back and wire in the button controls. Because I'm sure most of you won't be wiring in the button controls. Son of a diddly. Batteries, 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 batteries. That is a concern.
it could just be the batteries. Yeah. There we go. Go ahead and test it out with an Easy Flash Omega because I know most of you, quite frankly, are playing your games that way. And because this is a worst case scenario, even though I have a um, EverDrive here, the Easy Flash is much more power hungry. So the fact that it's booting on nickel metal hydride batteries is a fantastic thing. is a step in the right direction because the older kits did not necessarily do that. Terribly sorry about the glare. <gasps> did they finally fix that frame dropping? It looks like they did. Well, I'll be damned. Took them long enough. Jesus. Oh, that's the color pods. Shit. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Normally you don't want to test at high brightness, but I want to make sure that when I power cycle this, worst case scenario. Oh, look at that. It's beautiful. So let's do the scrolling bars test. Like usual, um, this test, whenever that S in the word scrolling passes the left side of the screen, it issues a screen reset command, which uh, will cause a frame drop. That's just how the hardware works. And even the OEM screens will show a frame drop when you do that. But what we're looking for is if there are any other frame drops aside from that one point, or if there's any tearing at any points other than, or actually any tearing at all. Ideally, there should be no tearing. And you know what? I don't see any tearing, so that's nice. Let's do the reset. And I want the gray bars, but I forget what it's called. Gradient test. So the purpose of this is to show you what the uh, color palettes can do. Now, you can't always just boot the Game Boy into its built-in color palette mode, um, or you can use this. Oops. And cycle through the different palettes. The, um, yes, I know, like I said, you could just use the Game Boy's built in color palette mode. But what the Game Boy's built in color palette mode does not do is allow you to set color palettes in color games. Uh, for example, if we go into Pokemon Silver again, those. Those who played this game, I'm sure you know, it is in full color on a Game Boy Color or Game Boy Advance, and you cannot set the color palettes with the hardware itself. But you can do through the kit if you want to play in black and white, you know, pretend you're playing on a Game Boy Pocket or something, or original DMG or whatever. These overrides do work in full color games, and it's actually kind of cool. And then this last one, it's not quite a color palette. I think it's just like a blue a blue filter or something. I'm not 100% sure what it's supposed to be, but... Yeah. And then back to normal. So there you go. This is actually a pretty decent kit. This is much better than the uh, previous iterations. I'm actually really pleased with it. Um... Bear with me just a minute. I'm actually going to pause the video and just clean up my desk real quick. I'll be 
Be right back. All right, let's go ahead and get the uh, brightness control wired in. Um, so you would, if, if you were doing this normally, you would do this while it's still open rather than closing it all the way up and then uh, having to pull it apart again to do the wiring. But, you know, unfortunately that's not how things always work out for YouTube videos or even just when you're doing this sort of shit. Um, of course, you will know right off the bat whether it's working or not because you will have tested it before using the adhesive to stick the screen down. So that is not a big deal whatsoever. Luckily these things are real quick to take apart. Alright, so let's wire up the uh, brightness control here. Take that sticky thing off. Pop it right there. So let's see what the labels are we have L, R, select, and ground. I am 90% certain, certain uh, that ground we do not need to wire up, so let us double check that before proceeding. It's on continue continuity. So if we have that on ground, and then take one of these grounds here, you can see that there is continuity. So we can skip the ground pad. It's kind of what I figured, but it's always worth double checking. A good clue to that would have been the fact that they only include three wires too. Okay. So if I recall correctly, um, using L and R isn't the best method because there's a, um, like I think there's a button combination if you can press both of them at the same time. So I'm going to use L and A. I think that'll work out a little bit better. I'm also not going to use these test pads underneath the membranes, I'm going to um, do a continuity check and find different pads. But let's go ahead and get this started up here. So the buttons, how they work on the Game Boy Color is one of these pads is a ground, which on the left pad is the bottom one. So the top pad, I believe is one of these vias right here. And I guessed right on the first try, that usually never happens. It is this one right here, but double check that with continuity. Let's go ahead and get that soldered up. And had I thought about it beforehand, I would have absolutely swapped out tips on my soldering iron because this one, it's not big and, and unwieldy, it's just really not good at um, flat. Uh, like I, I, can't, I can't do vias with this tip. I have a hard time getting the uh, contact needed. Plan B. Tin that up. Try 
bring it down. And just jam it in the hole. Hope for the best. There we go. That looks good. Right, now let's find A. Which again, one of these is going to be the ground, which is that one. And one of these is going to be A. Again, I'm a little bit unnerved that I got that on the first guess. But it is this via right here. Uh, there's three right next to each other. It is the one on the right. And I'm going to have the same problem, so I'm going to try the same thing because that seemed to work out last time. There we go. It's not going anywhere. Soldering's a little sloppy because I took off some of the insulation, but it'll do. And then I guess let's do select, which I believe is on the left again. So this should be ground. Nope. That's ground. Okay. So that's that. And is that one of these. That is the bottom one of this section of vias. At least I didn't get that one on my first try. It's the one I'm pointing to right there. And left via. Cut that way too short, but that's okay. There we go. I got solder in the hole now, at least. In Davia. There we go. And now we're good to wire this up to this thing here. actually makes sense to cut these down should they need it. Eh, but there's actually not going to be that much slack. Okay. So this one we will solder to R. L's going to L, select going to select, but R is going to A. Let's go and get these tinned. I highly recommend getting these tinned with the uh, PCB outside of the unit, as in not over the screen, because um, you can ruin the screen this way.
but I have a vague semblance of an idea of what I'm doing, and I'm not holding the heat there very long, so I think we're going to be okay. okay. Not the best soldering, but it will be satisfactory for these purposes. Wait, I forgot something. Hang on. Come on out. Pulling up my solder before it gets everywhere. I kept, I kept bumping my arm into it. cover seven one two three four five six seven where did this aha tricky tricky that's not the right screw It's always such an interesting problem to have when the bit sticks to the screw so well that it actually falls out of the screwdriver. Like on one hand it's it's frustrating because it slows me down screwing this stuff back together, but on the other hand it makes me feel good because I know that I picked the proper size bit that it fits the screw so well. that I do with the battery cover. Oh, there it is. Okay, let's start a game first, I guess. Oh, okay, I suppose I could have done up and down because there's no pallet control. That might have made more sense. So if you do the button controls, you only have brightness controls. There's no pallets unless... Ah, there you go. That's why we did it. Because if you press both at the same time, it does the pallet. Okay, I feel better about that now. 
So one of them just decreases brightness. The other will increase. And then both of them will swap the palettes. That is not actually an easy combo to hit. I might have to rethink that. But there we go. I'm actually really happy with this kit. So if you want to get one, this is actually my new recommended Game Boy Color kit. I was... Um, I do keep a list of all the backlight kits out there that I do maintain. And of course, I'm going to have to update it now because this fucking kit, of course. Son of a bitch making me do work. Um, but anyway, I will go ahead and link that in the description. And what that list consists of are just my notes. You know, just quick one, two, five sentences about these kits. You know, um, some major pros, major cons. Uh, and then, you know, do I recommend it? And then each section, which it's broken down by Game Boy Color, Game Boy Pocket, DMG, etc. It's broken down by each system. And then each section has a summary up at the top of, you know, if I were building a console and I can only pick one kit, I would pick X kit. And I think this is my new Game Boy Color kit pick. Um, unfortunately, they are still shipping with the top lease screens, so the LG screens are going to be a little bit better. If you have one, feel free to swap it in, or even you can swap out your Funny Playing install with one of these, because uh, it's the exact same screen, but there you go. If you have any questions, feel free to hit me up in the comments. Otherwise, I've been Mako, and you have yourself an excellent day.